races will be drawn maybe 50 yards away from where the starting gate will sit for the Breeders' Cup Classic. Now it's time to see how they line up. The draw is extremely important. Anyone who told you it wasn't, you were told wrong. Easy to overlook, but the reason why it's important is that you have a horse with a certain running style. Let's say you have a very fast horse. If he draws outside in a field of 12, for example, he's got to go in front of all the 11 other horses to get over to the rail to get his position to be where he's most effective. Same thing could happen if you have a fast horse who's down on the rail. The draw, I don't like the draw. I hate going to the draw because I like, I like to show up afterwards like, hey, what'd I get? But it matters a lot. You know, that's, that's kind of the way it works out. It's the luck of the draw, and sometimes the draw isn't so lucky for a lot of people. The phrase all in really applies to the Breeders' Cup Classic because it requires a lot of dedication from everyone involved. And if everything goes right, it can be a pretty special accomplishment. Today at 3.30 they have the drawer and all the post positions will be designated. Right now, the Breeders' Cup Classic would be a total of 11 horses, starting with one code of honor. And this is not post position, this is just a list. Code of honor, elate, high power, math wizard, McKinsey, Mongolian groom, Owendale, Seeking the Soul, Fino Rosso, War of Will, and Yoshida. Do you have a favorite on that list? Uh, I like Code of Honor. We're six days out to the Classic, and uh, people still arriving from other places. We're actually seven days out to the Classic. Six days to the Classic. Seven, the seven days, six days. Saturday, it makes it seven days, six days to Breeders' Cup Day. The juveniles run on Friday. Yeah, but he's talking about, she's talking about the Classic. Well, the Classic is on Saturday, so that will be how many days? From now to Saturday, seven days. Six days. Six days. Six days? Come on already. Okay. You have one in there, Juan? Yeah, I gotta find it, Frankie. The horseman's liaison travels the barn area and distributes the saddle cloths, hats, blanket, and works with the horsemen to uh, take care of all their needs. As soon as the horse and trainers arrive, we go greet them. We bring them uh, saddle towels, we bring them hats and their jackets. So we have the hats for Vino Rosso. Just want to get out a hat. Get out a hat. We haven't even opened that box yet. Voila. So we have here um, each horse, each participant. This is our hat for this year. We're the only hats that we hand out are people that participants that should have them. So, and they're entitled to give them to whoever they want. The owners and the trainers. It's it's their preference. And this is our classic blanket. This year was sponsored by Long Jeans. Stretch it the other way. This is uh, the Breeders' Cup Champions. Breeders' Cup Classic. It is emotional for us. Very. It's emotional because you're crowning champions. The whole breed is The whole cup. event. The whole event is exciting. You're driving to me. I'm driving. Sure? Yeah, you're not allowed to drive. Not allowed to drive. Don't crash. Don't crash this <laughs> Slow, Juan, slow. If it's too fast, I don't want to fall out. There we go. Yeah, Riley should be either in the attack room. The horse is here to the right, see if he's in the attack room here. Okay, let's go. Hey, Riley. How we doing? How you doing? Pretty good, good pretty good. We got your uh, hats there for Elite, and for Yoshida, and your saddle towels for the Classic. Your saddle cloth, Riley. Beautiful. You know when you feel you in the Classic, so good luck. All right, we'll All right. Need it. All right. Anything you need, just, you have my number, right? Yes, sir. Yes, give us a buzz. Give us a call. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you Riley. very much. Thanks. I appreciate it. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. When we receive the saddle towels and the hats and the jackets from the horseman's liaison, it's, it's pretty similar to getting your NBA All-Star jersey. It really signifies what the horse has accomplished all year and the people who work with the horses, so it really, truly means a lot. We have two horses in the Breeders' Cup Classic. 
the Colt Yoshida and the Mary Late. Yoshida's regular rider was Joel Rosario. He had picked up the mount on McKinsey in the Breeders' Cup Classic. So we had to look for a new rider and Mike Smith was free and agreed to ride the horse. And trading Joel Rosario for Mike Smith, it's similar to trading Kevin Durant for LeBron James. You can't really go wrong either way. I like you, buddy, but I'm not wearing your hat. I, I apologize for that. I mean, don't let it ruin your day. Late's just a couple stalls over here. It's special that we're running a late in the Classic versus the boys because Zenyatta did it 10 years ago at Santa Anita. It's unbelievable! So if you're superstitious or anything like that, you could say that we picked the right year to try it. We have a great mare, and she's going up against a great group of males. No easy task, but we wouldn't be here unless we thought we had a chance. A late special, the Oshita special. If they could dead heat for the win, I'd be plenty happy with that. Let's go, Frank. We're going to go over to Baffert's barn. Hi, Bob. Hey. How we doing, buddy? What's going on? Nothing. Just want to bring you McKinsey's gear. You know, these horses, they know when they win and they know when they lose. And that's the thing about it. They come back, they, they're mad. When they get beat, they're mad when they get back. McKenzie was so upset after that last race. Is there an upset brewing? You bet there is. I think the awesome again, it was like one of those races where, you know, we're the heavy favorite. But sometimes when it looks too easy, it was the toughest one. I'm a very competitive guy. And that's why sometimes when you're that competitive, and you get beat, you should not talk to anybody for at least a half an hour. <laughs> a famous football coach from USC told me years ago, he says, you know, Bob, I tell my players, when you get beat, that first five minutes after that game is gonna be the most important part of your life. Do not say anything, you know? Poor Mike, you know what, I love Mike, he's like a brother to me, but I was just so frustrated because that horse means a lot to me. I, I want that horse. I wanted him to be horse of the year. And when they get beat like that, and then you read about, well, he's not that good a horse. He can't go. That horse is, to me, he's one of the best horses I've ever trained, the top 10 horses. And he's gonna have to show it. Now he's gotta really show it. I just, I don't know. You know, sometimes I feel, I go with my gut. And I hate doing that. I and mean, I hate taking off a great rider off a horse like that. It's not cool. You know, and I told Mike, I said, Mike, I said, I hope you find somebody to beat me with, and he probably will, because that's what they do. Probably wouldn't have handled it as well, and probably would have crushed me at a younger age, but it's not unusual to make a change. I'm just glad that I was blessed enough to pick up a really nice horse like Yoshida so that I have a chance. You know, sometimes the first time you ride these, these horses is the best time. Because then you don't know, you don't know much about them and you just go with the feel, you know, right off the bat. And, and, and sometimes that works a whole lot better. Sometimes you think that he don't like a specific thing and maybe he's going to be fine with it that day. And because you thought that he wasn't going to like it, you reacted before you even gave him a chance to, to, to see if he was going to be happy in there or not. I mean, you, you don't have time. In those two minutes, you don't want it doing what you think is right. You, know, you want to do what they think is right. McKenzie's going to be difficult to outrun if he runs his race, but we can see if we can just turn the tables on him. The draw is an important part of the dynamic of the race. Horses have to be in a favorable position for them. You want my good side? <laughs> Sometimes it's not good to be on the rail. Sometimes it's not good to be far outside. Mostly trainers will want their horses to be kind of in the middle of the field and have a shorter run toward that first turn. 36 years ago, an idea came to fruition to create an end of the year championship for thoroughbreds, bringing the best of the best from across the world in truly a global event, the $6 million long chain years come class. Gentlemen, take it away. Number eight, number eight, Mackenzie. Mackenzie, the morning line favorite for the Breeders' Cup Classic. Number four, Laura Will. 
I never talk about draws because I'm really superstitious about that. Number 11, Code of Honor. Code of Honor, the outside post position, looks to give his Hall of Fame trainer a first victory in the Breeders' Cup Classic. I know where I don't want to be, I know where I want to be, whatever, but uh, usually I draw horrible. <laughs> number two, number five, number three, number six, Elaine. On the 10-year anniversary of Zenyatta beating the boys in the Breeders' Cup Classic, a lake looks to join that elite group of one for her Hall of Fame trainer. I'll see a certain draw and I go, and the way I drew, I guess the Lord doesn't want me to win this race. I don't know, you know, it's terrible, but I've got some really bad draws, and it cost me, you know, a win. Math Wizard draws the rail. Number seven, higher power. And number nine, Mongolian groom. Mongolian Stables has seen victory at the Breeders' Cup, but this undoubtedly would be the biggest. You know, nobody wants a bad post, but when you talk about pressure, when you're the heavy favorite, you have a target on your back. That is your field for the $6 million Longines Breeders' Cup Classic. I make a lot of training mistakes, but when it's crunch time, I just feel like it's like you get these great football players. You know, Tom Brady throws a beautiful pass right in the end zone. He's by himself, and he drops it. Well, come on, you're supposed to make those catches, you know? Did you know that Brittany's mum's having a barbecue tonight, and obviously while she enjoys being here to talk about the Breeders' Cup Classic, she's in a bit of a rush, so we'll good belt through the well, rest of it. Well, you wanna know why poor mom has been slaving away all day? I gotta go help her. I think this might be the Jockey Club Gold Cup reincarnated. Code of Honor, Vino Rosso coming might down be, to the yeah, wire together. Vino Rosso, Code of Honor, Vino Rosso, Code of Honor. You have to play. Too close to call! So, Code of Honor, you've got to look at this horse as the poster boy for old school US dirt racing. It's the Farish family mm -hmm. steeped in generations of Horses beautiful and... thoroughbreds. It's Shug McGahey, the sort of trainer's trainer, old school, patient. Mm -hmm. But they looked at the field this year and thought the race is so open, we've got to give it a go. And he might right. just be the horse with a bit of brilliance, you see. Hmm. So higher power, Brittany, is drawn in post position seven, which mm -hmm. I think, you know, however, however you want to be ridden, that's just about bang on in a field this, mm -hmm. this size. I would say lucky post position seven is what pretty much everybody wants. Yeah in any race. A late for Bill Mott, mm -hmm. five-year-old mare, going up against the boys at a mile and a quarter distance, which we know she likes, and looking to join Zenyatta as being the only mm. other female to yeah. win the Breeders' Cup Classic. Somewhat of a story, 10 years on from when mm -hmm. Zenyatta raised the roof here at uh, Santa Anita Park. And I think she can do it. Never heard a noise like it, never been involved in a horse race like it. The ground shook, and there wasn't an earthquake. Here's my, my thing about McKinsey. Bob Buffett's trained some unbelievably talented horses in his career. There's no point in listing them all because we'd be here all day. But I think Bob Buffett is willing this horse to be better than he actually is. As he said, I'm going for something, got some kind of gut feeling, some instinct that I can get a bit more out of this horse. The horse has got a bit more to give, so what I'll, I'll, the, my, so almost my last resort is I'll change the jockey. Mike's gonna be annoyed that he's taken off the horse, obviously. But he, he's dealt with it so well. Like, he just get on with it picks up a ride on Yoshida. And of course, that would be, that'd be a, a story as well. Imagine McKinsey in if front, inside the furlong, and- Here comes Yoshida. Here comes Yoshida, Mike Smith. <laughs> See you later, Bob. It, it's happened before, it could happen again. No, it's definitely happened before. It's, it's, all, it's all just a funky year, isn't it's it? It's a wide open year. Yeah. Which makes it exciting. Yeah. This is why you run the race. That's this is why the connections with 30 to one shots put up the money to be in that starting gate because they run the race and you're not sure how it's going to unfold. And if any year to be in that starting gate, this is the year. And I think that's what the sport needs right now. Something to root for.